Hey review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the new A Feather and Bone record entitled Sulfuric Disintegration. There have been very few records that have dropped this year that can rival the sheer level of anticipation I had going into this record. To say that I was hyped or excited would just be an understatement and sell this record short. There are many contributing factors to this. Number one, frankly, bluntly put, the singles were fantastic. Combine that with my admiration looking at the band from afar when I first heard the singles in anticipation, I went and did some back catalog research and started to understand how far a feather and bone have come throughout the years. In a generally short runtime, starting as Sort of this hardcore punk band and slowly but surely developing this bestial death metal sound that recalled the old school but felt very much in the moment. Everything from the album art to the song titles to the lyrical themes as well as the logo of the band just slowly but surely becoming more gruesome, more grotesque. Their logo right now fits very squarely into the label that they find themselves on, Profound Lore Records. It's practically unreadable. Unless you get really close up, it looks slimy, it looks gross. So now that I've gotten out of the way the sort of preliminary thoughts that I've had about this band and just how excited I was, expectations can be a very bad thing for a record like this in a genre like this, as someone that has been very outspoken about how a lot of the death metal bands that play the style in the old school but are definitely new school have become a lot more stale, a lot more run-of-the-mill, and really lack a lot of diversity and a lot of dynamics. I can easily say that A Feather and Bone have effectively come out with one of the best death metal records of 2020, and I had really hoped they would, and down in my heart, I really felt that they would. I'm not going to say that this record is without flaws, which we will get into, but this record kicks complete and total ass. Like I said, their change over the years has just been magnificent. The roots of a lot of these tracks lie in the 80s and 90s really brutal death metal scene, and they definitely are clinging to a lot of the patterns and I would say cliches that a lot of bands are playing in, but they turn it up a level to be so dense and and claustrophobic and exquisitely assembled that it can rival the best of the best that has come out recently because even if you look at a band like Cerebral Rot which is one of my favorite contemporary death metal bands even Cerebral Rot has time where it feels more expansive and the mix really gives it a chance to sound that way. This mix sounds super bassy and I'm not just talking about the bass guitar. It sounds like this impenetrable rock that you are punching and punching but cannot get through. There are moments where it sounds like straight death metal static and everything is EQ'd really well. It never becomes too clean but it never becomes too dingy. It just has this musty and dusty aesthetic that just covers the entire thing like a thick layer of fog. They do not overstay their welcome and they do not sell themselves short. It's only six tracks and 30 minutes long. And despite how chaotic and just generally consistently frenzied this band feels, they never allow themselves to go so deep into the murky pit that they are inaccessible. There are moments where the riffs genuinely feel pretty damn catchy. They'll hit a bit of a progressive shift, they will hit a bit of an arpeggio that just caps off a moment on the record in a solid way, and although they do squarely fit into the death metal archetype, specifically the old school death metal archetype, there are some moments of really solid technicality spread that boost these tracks up even more. If there's one thing that could objectively be said is not the best about this record, I would say number one, while it is a short record and while they do the style a lot of justice, if I had to nitpick, definitely a lot of these tracks can blend together, not because of how they're crafted or the riff writing, but because of how over the top it feels. The way it is constant, the way it is just drilling, just sabotaging your ear, this just audio assault that is so sharp and so brittle. It is a lot and it is draining. It sort of takes a toll. It puts you in this hollow feeling with how much you're being hit with it much. And as a result of that, that unfortunately makes this record at times blend into just one big flurry, like a tornado that's passing 
through a big field. You're getting swept up in it, but it is so dizzying that you don't know where the hell you are. You know and acknowledge the fact that you're in a tornado, although you'd probably die pretty soon, but you just don't know where the hell you are. Second thing, and this sort of goes in line with the last point, I, a lot of times, will pick apart a band based on the bass and how prominent it is, how much of a focal point it can play, because in death metal I think that bass is something that deserves a lot more attention and the bands that do do it well I respect a lot, whether it is a fretless bass or a fretted bass. And unfortunately, because of how much noise this trio stirs up, there really isn't a moment where the bass just takes the forefront for too terribly long and more so when it is chaos, when it is complete total madness, it sort of blends in with the guitar to just sound like a sort of grittier lower guitar and play second fiddle to the guitar as opposed to being its own entity. But without a doubt, this band has come an extremely long way and my anticipation was not only fully met but exceeded. This was such a breath of fresh air and yes, I was putting it to a high standard before it even released because what I was hearing was blowing me away with just how solid the material was and how compact this track listing was looking to turn out. And I'm happy to say that for death metal fans, this is going to be a complete and total treat. I feel like people that enjoy this style but have just been annoyed by how it feels like it just has been treading water over the months, surely there have been spots where there is a really great release, just like with any genre. And I think that this should not be passed up. I think this is a wonderful release, a treat for death metal fans, fantastic assembled and I have to give a tip of my non-existent hat right now go figure the one episode of this channel that I do not wear a hat and yes I just called my channel an episode <laughs> but in my opinion genuinely wholeheartedly I think this is one of those releases that just come around a couple times a year in a specific genre in the future I would love to see a feather and bone continue to push the limits of their own sound while still maintaining their quote-unquote death metal accessibility not feel too bloated or overstay their welcome because I worry that if they were to take this style and extend it past a duration that was acceptable, it really could blend in in a way that took away from the diversity and just how compact and digestible this record is in comparison to a record that pushed 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. I don't necessarily think they should be shorter either. I think it's a perfect link to stay around the 30 minute mark and I'd love to hear more in this style because a feather and bone killed it on this record and I can't stress that enough. I'm going to be giving this album an 8.5 out of 10 and that is a wrap. Have you heard this new A Feather and Bone record, Sulfuric Disintegration? If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this record. I would love to discuss it with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to join the review family today, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is, my name is Jay Morris, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying fair well.